Welcome to uh, this uh, VR Duino meetup, and today we're going to be talking about input devices uh, using Arduino and other input devices for VR. So first up, uh, how about everybody introduce themselves? We'll see. Okay. Who starts? <laughs> oh, I guess uh, we'll start left and go right. Sorry. Oh, is our screen the same? I'll go first. Uh, I'm Brandon. I just got an Oculus Rift a couple couple weeks ago. I'm interested in different um, inputs for it. So uh, interested in not not very good at electronics, but I can do CAD and mechanical. So that's what I'm interested in right now. Awesome. Okay, uh, Randy, you're next. I'm Randy Phillips. I mess around a lot with Unity and Arduinos and stuff, and I'm working on this guy. Lots of wires. Uh, virtual reality glove. Um, besides that, I don't know what to say, so... <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, and uh, I'm Peter Sassman, and uh, here in Arlington, uh, in going for a computer engineering uh, degree, fourth year, and working on Project Gauntlet, so slightly different uh, haptic feedback glove. And yeah, that's it, uh, all of us. So, um, how about Randy? You tell us some more about uh, your project, uh, since. Doesn't look like there's any other projects here today. Okay. Um, so my virtual reality glove is obviously to put your arm in the actual virtual world. Uh, so if I hit play here, uh, so it can sense the rotation of your hand using a tilt sensor and a or an accelerometer and a gyro, and it can also follow the fingers opening and closing. Uh, I only have two fingers hooked up right now, but uh, they are just partial based on how far you're bending your finger. It's actually bending it in the world. And then it also has the elbow piece here, which moves the whole arm. And I will have another tense or tilt sensor on the elbow here, and that'll follow your shoulder as well. So that's where it stands right now. Nice. Awesome. So, uh, how would you compare it to like uh, STEM and Prio VR and kind of like the motion tracking? You're telling me a little bit about it earlier, but for everybody. Um, well, compared to like uh, the Piero or whatever it is, uh, that's mostly got a joystick type thing, kind of like the Razer Hydra. Mm -hmm. uh, so, it doesn't actually track each individual finger, it just tracks in open or closed state. It might right. have an analog trigger so you can do slight movement, but for the most part it's just open or closed. And this tracks each indi individual finger as partially open or whatnot. Right. Uh, the other ones are also really expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, uh, weren't they at first asking for like $500 on their system? and then? Well, STEM, they were asking oh, for... Oh, not STEM. STEM was 300 yeah, I was going to say, yeah. STEM was asking for like $200 for the base, and then uh, $50 for each individual STEM piece. The other issue with like STEM is it only has a maximum of five inputs, so right. it's not super accurate uh, yeah, as yeah. far as, you know, like if you're walking, or if you have it on your wrist and then on your body, it only has two points of reference, so it can't figure out where the elbow is. So if you put your hand in and out it uses IK solvers, so it'll, generally speaking, have your elbow be almost a straight-out motion, where, like mine, if you tilt down or tilt up, it will follow that exactly the same. Right, right. So it's got more points, kind of like Pryo, <clears throat> except for they were asking for a lot more money. You're going to yeah. try to get a more inexpensive solution. Yeah. Uh, right. Like STEM specifically, like I said, it's like $300 just to get started with it. This, if I get it down to the price point I want, it would be somewhere around $50 to $75 at retail. Awesome. So considerably, and that's for two gloves, not just one. Really? Okay. Yeah. Wow. 
if I can. <laughs> that's that's the goal. Uh, pretty much, instead of using flex sensors like I'm using, I'm wanting to use uh, potentiometers. Each one of these flex sensors is thirteen dollars, and I would have three potentiometers for each finger, two for the thumb, or something like that. Uh, and it would be able to then track motion like this. Right now, I just get up and down motion, uh, but I could have a potentiometer at the knuckle here that would get the open and close motion. So it'd be a lot more data points to actually, you know, simulate exactly what you're doing. Right, right. Like how uh, Reverend Kyle kind of was talking, um, like, he, a lot of people are going to want to sit down while doing their VR experience. Uh so, or only be standing for a short period of time if they're using something like the uh, Omni. So, like, a lot of people aren't going to need, like, their legs tracked or other parts of their body. They're just going to need the arms. So your tracking solution will kind of cut down on the cost because you don't necessarily need all that. Even if you are standing up, like, the Rift and the Omni or whatever you're using will take care of, like, the leg tracking and everything like that. Yeah. The idea is, is to have each major section of the body broke down into its own system. So you'd have arms separate from legs, separate from head. Um, right. And if you have all that information, then you don't have to track the body because it's being tracked. You can put all the points together to figure out where the body is because there's no way to not know where the body is at that point. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, Brandon, do you want to tell them about like, some of your projects like with uh, 3D printing and stuff? Uh, yeah, so um, my background is in a lot of CAD modeling and 3D printing, um, so, and, and I'm more interested in taking um, the kind of thing that Randy has um, a, and uh, putting together a package for it so we can just take all the electronics and just slip them into place um, or, or take the kind of things... Um, I, I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, it's it's more. I, I'm more interested in the er ergonomics and making it so um, the average customer would would want to put this on their hand. Um, and, to and make it, it where my thing doesn't dig into my arm. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Um, or, yeah. or the beautiful plexiglass glove that that uh, that we have over here. So. Um, Right, right. Oh, yeah, the the kind of uh, put it didn't do much thinking about like how how much the weight would affect the hand and the ergonomics of like the motors and the things yeah. needing to be back here so that it's yeah once again not digging into your skin and stuff and the punching yeah. people in the face thing. <laughs> and then uh, you were also saying like yeah you could. Uh, provide people who do want to use the full, you know, more full body tracking, the ability to slip in different things like the stem module and stuff, having that flexibility in there, or Razor yeah. Hydra, Wiimote, whatever their preference of choice, uh, Randy, your uh, tracking solutions and everything like that. So it could have its own and it could also integrate others type of thing. Right. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, on Project Gauntlet side of thing, we, last summer, basically, we're thinking, like, uh, are we going to make, like, a, you know, treadmill, or are we going to make, like, a glove, and then Virtuix came so I was like, ah, nope, not a treadmill, so, <laughs> started working on a glove, and, uh, yeah, it, it works pretty good, like, we can get hard and soft, let me pull it up here, so, once it's all powered up, uh, once it tracks your finger movements as they close, it just pulls the string forward, moving each of these. So it knows once you've hit a certain point in the virtual world, like once it's moved your fingers and then it touches the object, then it'll know that it needs to either resist or if the tag says that it's squishy, then it only resists you a little bit. And when your hands are at rest, then it retracts it back to here. But some of the other problems with this is these motors are a little bit buzzy so need a higher frequency so that they don't buzz and stuff. And definitely all of it moved back into a nice package, like you were talking about, Brandon, on, like, a, yeah, 3D printed. So, uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Go uh, ahead. I was just, yeah, the, the um, ha having the things, like, on, on the wrist, um, especially those pots are just giant. Or, yeah. So 
moving them back to the forearm that that doesn't really need any finesse, whereas your fingers need to be able to actually move and not be hindered by the giant things. So. Right, right. Yeah, so we were, I was talking with um, Randy here a little bit. We were saying either, uh, like, need, like, um, you need, like, a real type, one where it would have to count, like, ticks type of thing. Optical, I believe you said, right? Let me switch back over, yeah. Like, an optical... Well, there's... Uh, That's one option. Yeah, there's a volume knob type thing, like a potentiometer. Uh, I can't remember what it's called still. But effectively, it's a never-ending spinning knob. It's like uh, what a volume knob in most cars have nowadays. Uh, yeah. And all it does is it has two light sensors in it, and then there's a rod. the rod that you spin has a white and a black line, and it can tell which direction you're going based on which sensor has those signals. Right, so right. all you'd have to do is have, a, uh, have that sensor there and then have something to move it in and out based on the distance, you know, what strength you want it to be. Right, right. And then for like, uh, or the alternative is you need like a 5-inch potentiometer where there's this nice package that uh, SparkFun has where like the motors and the potentiometers are together, but it's a little bit more expensive. But finding like an individual potentiometer, I haven't really seen any individually packaged, like you know, just a five five inch potentiometer, linear potentiometer. So if anybody sees one out there, you know, let us know, type of thing. Uh, post in the comments below, and uh, we'll take a look into that because buying the pieces individually and putting them together would probably be cheaper than using these. However, for a prototype, these are fine. Just to you know get the point across type of thing. Prototyping is expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This glove and probably has, I've probably bought over $200 worth of stuff for it to try and do different things right. with it. Right, yeah. So, like, on this one, I think is like, 125 So, yeah, if, <laughs> having two gloves together, yeah, you're, you're getting up to, like, you know, 300 and stuff like that. So... Definitely in the production phase, finding ways to reduce that. And you were saying you were thinking about taking yours to Kickstarter? Coming yeah, up or? at some point. I I would like to do it sometime soon, but who knows? <laughs> right, right. My main thing has been getting all the sensors and stuff because I've been ordering parts from China to get them you know, cheap. Because the one sensor here in the U.S. is like $20, but from China it's 3 Right. So it's obviously considerably cheaper. Yeah, um, yeah. Fine. Do you have any uh, comparison of quality? It's going to be the same because the stuff from here is built in China and just shipped here. Well, and then they, they, they market just sell it. Yeah. <laughs> right. But quality is not inherently the same. So It's pretty much the same when it comes to PCBs. It's all, They all use the same machines. It's just an automated CAD system hmm. with the pathing and all that. Right, right. It's just China has cheap labor. Yeah. They pay people five cents a day. <laughs> <laughs> and then some of that stuff, like you had said, they it's the same stuff that they send over here, and then they put a label on it and sell it to you for a lot. You know, they... They make yeah, a profit off of it. <laughs> uh, the chips that I have are uh, GY-521 chips, and literally it's the exact same chip, and it's right. the choice of $3 or $20. Mm. So. so, yeah, these uh, Arduinos and other shields can be, you know, yeah, I've, impressive. I've, yeah, down like the I cost told you earlier, I've built an Arduino for about $6 per unit. Yeah. And that's including the Arduino chip and programming it and everything like that. It's dirt cheap if you buy stuff from China. Right, right. So, um, did uh, Brandon, did you get a chance to mess around with any... I know you're busy uh, with with um, your checkpoint in uh, your senior design program. Were you able to mess around with uh, CAD at all? Or... Uh, I was able to get a little bit done. Um basically ran into an issue with uh, 
the the prepackage of the the linear pot. Um, it's, if you want to pull them up on screen, you can pretty much see how how huge they are. They're like, oh, uh, okay, ki- um, kind of unnecessarily um, big. And I can do a screen share. Yeah, let's see here, screen share, or, or even just like the there physical you one you have. There we go. The uh, yeah, they're about uh, yeah, they're pretty long. Yeah. Well, and, and the main thing is you, you end up, because you're constrained to that weird geometry um, of the L shape, right. uh, you end up having a, a a wrist think like Pip-Boy from Fallout. You have one of those wrist things, but <laughs> it's a good six inches in diameter, and it's just completely oversized and ridiculous. Ah. Uh, the way, the way I had it oriented. Um, so I was thinking about flipping, flipping all the things upside down like you currently have on your prototype as opposed to setting the motors in, but uh, I haven't gotten that far. Oh. Other projects well, and whatnot. Right, right. Do you want to toss anything up on the screen, like show like CAD stuff? Uh, I'm actually not on my, my CADing computer. So oh, that. okay. Right. <laughs> but, um, I mean, you That's can basically fine. imagine a Pip-Boy from Fallout except giant. So, right. Uh, a little bit more. I was, I was looking into getting the individual components and doing it, from, like, from scratch because um, not only is it cheaper, like you said, but it gives you more freedom in the actual... Um, adjustment of the of, uh, in, in the design of the, the project. So, um, right. But prototype doesn't really need to be nice and compact. Maybe not. So, um, probably next week I'll I'll have something that can actually I'll try to get something printed so you can have like a physical model like out. But we'll awesome, see. cool. And uh, so that would be like the wrist se- section, right? Or the yeah, arm? I, I, yeah, I'm kind of thinking like basically from the forearm. The forearm is where all the, the brains and, and brawn would go with like the motors. Um, and then um, uh, I was telling Peter earlier, but uh, we were, the, the current system that he has with the wires, um, there's a... They're, they're very similar to Bowden cables, which are what you find in uh, brake lines on bicycles, for example. Um, and it's basically put a string in a tube, and the string will have to follow that tube. So um, it would make right. for a very it would make for a very slim glove. You could just have a really thin glove on your hand with tubes going up to each finger, um, and then all the all the big stuff down here, so you have a really nice light hand, but you have a relatively heavy all the all the heavy duty stuff on your forearm. So yeah, so like uh, uh, Randy, like uh, you had said, with um, putting at the wrist uh, a point where all those things come together, you could have the Bowden cables come yeah. to each of the uh, come connect back here, connect at the wrist, and then. Co- Go down to each of You'd the things. You'd have to go down each knuckle because otherwise it changes the distance, the length. Uh, because if the string falls to the side or something like that, it would change the length of it. Yeah, it has to stay down the so, middle. And yeah, you'd then have to keep it, it on the middle of each knuckle. Yeah, right. and then after it's connected here, then it would go out and then it lets it freely pull. So how flexible are those Bowden cables? Would it possibly be that um, once it comes out the end of... I guess it's like a hardened rubber tube kind of, sort of. Would it... So, uh, well, you can make them out of anything that you want, really. You could just have cloth around a piece of thread. But, yeah. So you can make it as flexible as you want it to be. So the, uh, ca- the that part could be hard and sticking out instead of... or Well, the rest of it could be flexible, but for that particular part, it could be hard. But you had mentioned earlier, like, you don't want to be like... Um, 
one of the X-Men uh, Wolverine and accidentally punch out your screen or something because they're too pointy. So put like something soft on the end of each of those maybe. <clears throat> what are y'all's thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, what I was thinking was, was like Randy said, just, um, I mean, these aren't precision um, on, on the level of what boating cables are normally used for, which is, um, which is like the order of millimeters. Like, if we're off by like half a centimeter, the user's probably not going to notice. So um, I was thinking just cloth, a, a cloth tube um, with a high, high, high strength fishing line inside to give you that nice slippery motion. Um, and then uh, you, there wouldn't, it, I mean, it wouldn't be any hard plastic on it at all. It would just be like cables inside of a cloth glove. So. Um, that's another thing to look into. Um, right, right. I don't know, get your sewing machines ready and <laughs> get that home ec, you know. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> uh, but for the prototype, are you thinking, uh, like, the buy some pre-bought Bowden cables or...? Uh, maybe. maybe. I mean, it's, it really wouldn't be that hard to, to just sew it up and go. Um, right. Uh, but we'll so, see. So if anybody out there is good at sewing and wants to send some homemade Bowden cables, <laughs> let us know. Awesome. So uh, I guess we've kind of covered the glove side of things for this part of the live broadcast. Um, is there anything, other input devices y'all have seen out there that uh, y'all would like to talk about? Uh I, I actually, not related to a new input device, but I had a question for Randy. Um, you're, uh, you're, you're using the flex sensors. Mm. What is the radius of, the, the minimum radius of curvature you can do? Because I was thinking about looking at those, but it seemed like if you bent your hand too much, you would just snap the plastic or something. Does that, is uh, that an issue? The only, the only issue is, is at the very end. Uh, let's see if I can... At the very end, there's a plastic piece that covers the entirety of this, but at the very oh, yeah. end where the metal connects is not covered uh -huh. by that plastic, so it's really easy to snap it by bending too far. Okay. But this stuff, you can wow. bend it you know, that far, and it'll work fine. Okay. Right. That's pretty good. <clears throat> so, yeah. However, the if price you... point, like you said, was... Yeah, it's 15, $13. 13 Thirteen yeah. for each. So if you had two gloves, you know that if you did just the main four fingers, it's eight of them. So that's yeah. like ninety to a hundred dollars just in flex sensors. Right, right. So we're all looking for that low cost distance so, tracking solution. So, oh. so that's another thing. Why, when you say four fingers, which four fingers are you talking about? I'm talking about uh, these four fingers. Uh, the reason for that is is you would still need the thumbs with a type of joystick for movement. And that's oh. the only reason I don't mention the thumb at all. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to come up with some type of idea for movement, but besides putting you know a whole bunch of buttons on the floor for you to step on, I can't yeah. come up with much besides just putting joysticks on the thumbs. Mm -hmm. No Spider-Man motions to go move forward or something. <laughs> but, um, you could do that, but it'd be, you know, after a while of doing this forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, one thing I was thinking about is uh, your, your ring finger and your pinky finger are pretty well tied together in terms of tendons. Um, like, if you, if you bend, bend your ring finger... I can, your, I can go all the way down like that, so... True. Yeah, <laughs> I can articulate each of them individually fairly well. I mean, so. The way that a lot of places or, or a lot of gloves that I've seen before do it is they tie the ring finger and point or the middle finger and pointer finger together, and then the ring finger together. So you just have three fingers. Okay. Yeah. But I'm going for as much, you know, articulation as possible. Yeah. It, it's mainly immersion. I mean, if you can, if you bend your ring finger and both fingers bend, it feels weird. Yeah. <laughs> so if you have an Oculus Rift on, and like I was, I said earlier, I had uh, to. What's your name? <laughs> Sorry, I'm horrible with names. Uh, uh, wait, me? Yeah, you. <laughs> oh, Peter. Peter. Hey, okay, or you sorry. can call me Red. Either one. <laughs> horrible with names, but uh, 
Yeah, they show up down there. You have okay. the mouse over them. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I I'm not trying to turn off because it's, uh, there's a like a mode where it switches between whoever's talking, and I I don't know how to deactivate it. Like once I oh, you just on click on if you click on one, uh, then you just click on it again to deactivate it. Okay. Deactivated now. Okay, now it should auto switch. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. As soon as someone has priority voice, so it should have switched to me. There we go. Yeah, it switched to you. Okay, but uh, yeah, just as, as I was saying yourself. earlier, uh, I had the glove just sitting on the table and I was testing out some of the stuff and I was looking at it on the screen and I was bending the finger with my right hand and just had my left arm sitting there and mm-hmm. it was creeping me out because I could see my fingers moving but not my fingers moving. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's like a phantom, you know, phantom arm limb. type of thing. Phantom limb. Yeah. And yeah, it, it so just, if you, if you stop movement of an arm when you're in a virtual setting and your arm was normally moving and it just freezes, you go, you know, your brain goes, I should be moving. <laughs> so it's right. kind of like in Half Life Two when you get to the loading screens and they just freeze. Your whole brain goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> now for that uh, <clears throat> moving forward while in a sitting down thing, what what do y'all think of like the epoch, the emotive epoch? I have never uh, heard of it. Never heard of it, sorry. Oh, no, you haven't? Uh, let me see but if I can remember. I wouldn't doubt that one. I've heard of it, but I probably, or it's probably uh, just one of those things I don't remember the name. It's, uh, they had an earlier version of it, but it basically something you put on your head and it, through EEG, uh, it like oh. figures out oh, like your yeah. emotions oh. and stuff, and you can train it for moving forward, and the old one was like not, not, the greatest, from what I understand, from people who have used it, but they've claimed they've come, you know, a long way, and the Kickstarter was very successful for their new one, and has a much better form factor, too. Wait, are, are you going to be pulling out um, They don't work that EEG well. Thing? <laughs> they don't work that well at all. Wait, which one? What's that? That one's just a, um, a the MindFlex toy. Um, it's based on the same tech as emotive, um, and I've just got a little Arduino hooked up there that uh, eavesdrops on the data, and it's really difficult to get a clean signal. Yeah, uh, I know what you're talking about now by the emotive thing. Uh, they, yeah. The way that they work is they pretty much read beta waves coming out of your head, and uh, the issue is, is, or the way that they do it is they track how forceful the beta waves are and at a certain frequency in which they're being put out, because effectively the brain is just an electronic circuit, so they're just reading a specific magnetic field. Right. The issue is, is sometimes you can think Apple, and that might be similar to move forward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a lot of so. people are like, oh my, it's going to be you know sort of online or whatever, and that's like, uh, no, not quite. <laughs> We're not quite there yet. They have a long way to go before getting all that working to where I would feel comfortable using it in a game or something right, like that. Right. Uh, and then, like I had brought up earlier with you, Randy, like uh, the air egg. Uh, it, uh, they finally are posting pictures that look like they're about to start up a website again uh, and possibly be selling that. So uh, we'll go from left to right. Would you buy one if, or if you know what it is or... Should I uh, bring up a picture first? <laughs> bring up a picture. <laughs> bring up a picture, okay. I should I also can... say I don't think that people are in order on the their own screens. Because, uh, like, I'm all the way to the right, but I... Oh, okay. Sorry <laughs> yeah. about that. Let me... I'm, I don't know if it is in order always, but I'm pretty sure that your screen is always in the bottom right. Right. Okay. Uh, let's see... Hopefully they won't mind us showing it because it's free, like almost free advertising for them. Uh, just showing a quick picture. Uh, I'll, I'll just do a Google Images search. That'll probably be fastest. Eric Images, and then ba ba ba. Okay, so we'll just fl- flash this up there real quick. Okay, have have y'all seen this? I will okay. tell you when it finally shows up. <laughs> yeah, you're okay, it may take a there, second. There it's going. 
I'll, I'll click on mine first. Oh, the vest. Oh, yeah. The vest. Yeah, I would never buy it. Okay. No. <laughs> no. A wireless thing that like gives you vibratory and like pressure and other feedbacks for surround sound and all that. But I think the asking price is like five hundred. Yeah, it's yeah <laughs> too expensive. Too expensive. Uh, the other the other thing is is it's not accurate enough in my opinion. I mean, you can see like one of the pictures you have or it shows there has a whole bunch of blue rings and that's where their pressure sensing or pressure things are generating. Generating, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you feel the general area but you don't feel specifically where and that would just be annoying to me. Right, right. I I was hearing some people's ideas is for that was to uh, use like a vest like that, uh, but not uh, necessarily in a VR sense, but as like um, people who can't see, like it would vibrate in different spots to mean different messages or whatever. Yeah, the only problem with that is then you have to remember, you know, several hundred possible places doing meaning one thing, and if you feel two places at the same time, it you could not remember or tell which one is happening, or if five of them happen at the same time. Well, some people, uh, when they lose one sense, then their other senses are increased, so maybe if they have a higher... Uh, it's up for debate, you know. It, like it would come down to the specific person as to whether they can, you know, it, if they get sensory it. overload or not. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so since we're kind of on the topic of, you know, just other input devices, since... Yeah, we don't have any more, you know, devs on to this week. Uh, what, what are y'all? Uh, what's some other ones we could bring up? Let's see here, we got uh, the omnidirectional treadmills. There's like the Omni versus Cyberith. What do y'all think on uh, those two versus each other or whatever? <laughs> I think in general they're just not. I think that everyone that's bought one is about all that's going to buy them. Uh, and my reason for that is most people play games just to sit down and relax. And like I talked with you earlier about, people don't want to go into day Z and run for 6,000 meters. But maybe like a <clears throat> one-hour like vacation type experience. Like some people might like that, you know, go walk around yeah, some place they've never visited. Does it justify the cost of it then? Yeah, I, <laughs> That's the I, thing. I, I mean, honestly, if it was between buying an elliptical or a treadmill to put into my house to exercise or something, I would totally buy uh, probably not the Cyberith, but the Omni looks a little bit more natural for actually, like, running fast. Um, but, I mean, just... I don't think they're, they're, they either of them will work fantastically with any currently existing games. Um, it's just... Most games are designed to be like you are a superhuman. Uh, so when you use walking as input, it gets difficult. But I think if people designed like, um, yeah, I mean like even something like Wii Sports for for the Oculus Rift that was just kind of like run around a track or run around a tropical island, and it didn't really have a point except maybe collect balloons or whatever. Um, I think for a casual Casual exercise games, kind of thing, is where I think right. that kind of stuff will really take off. So now I'm gonna throw something into the loop. As you said, you know, people like to sit down, but you know, other people, you know, it want to get maybe like a little bit of exercise, or instead of that, like they want to be, you know, if you're moving at your feet, then you're a little bit more immersed, and then it matches what you're seeing a little bit more. So what about the stomps? Have you all seen that one out there on the uh, Oculus input thing? Is that the one that's just like little sensors in the feet? Yeah, he had him like strapped to his leg, and then he was stomping and like spinning around and yeah. moving forward. Yeah, it's it's an interesting idea, but that one inherently has this uh, an issue of the control. If you're tapping the walk forward, how do you do walk backwards? Oh, walk backwards. <laughs> because, yeah, you show left, right, and forward. I was like, wait. Yeah, there's backwards. no backwards. Where's backwards? Running yeah. away is for cowards. So that's just. That's that's the mentality behind that. Oh, okay. There you so, go. It it forces you. It takes away the option to run away. You gotta exactly. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, I I yeah. If we uh, next week have you know another one of these, maybe they could come on and like tell us 
their side of the story, like if they have it, plans. It's for an interesting idea. I just or something. don't know how well it'll it would actually play out without you know trying it myself. Right. So, yeah. That that's thing. that's the thing with all this VR stuff. Hopefully. Yeah. That's like my glove future. at this point is pointless because there's no games that have yeah. You know, there's like the portal stuff maybe, but there's no major games that have any type of hand input. They might have Razor Hydra where it moves the whole arm that way, but right. not, you know, you can't pick up a cup with my glove in any modern game because it's not programmed to. Yeah. So, so. They, uh, they needing content is the first step, <laughs> and then after there's the content, then you have to get it onto some people's hands, and you have to have people say, yes, this is... This is cool. This is what we want, and then other people will then you know be like, okay, I'll try it. And then once you have enough, then you can head to Kickstarter type of thing, and then hopefully have some more adopters type of thing. But still, if once all the uh, early adopters have finished, then all the late adopters they're like, no, nah, I gotta see this in the store and actually have it on my hand before I'll try it type of thing. So, yeah, yeah. So. On that note, um, obviously, uh, I have no experience programming in in terms of Unity or what whatnot. So this is mo mostly for you guys, um, Randy. We've seen your demos with the uh, with the hand, um, and Peter. I know you were talking about a um, coffee I'm cup to... demo, oh. be a barista or something. <laughs> be a barista, uh, yeah. So, I, I need to get some more shots of Reverend Kyle and have him be the barista <laughs> there. He, he said he wants to be in a game, so I, I we, we should help him have his wish come true. He'll, <laughs> he'll be the barista there and you know pouring the uh, cappuccino put him in a nice and putting the foamed milk, foamed milk, and then like taking a toothpick like they do in some pla fancy places and drawing images. That'll be like a little mini game. You got to draw an image in the coffee and then like give it to the person. I should say the foamed milk, though. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's it's an art. <laughs> but um, I, I mean, ha, ha, have you gotten anywhere on that? I'm waiting for screenshots. I I just got okay. the glove working with showing the arm today. So, <laughs> I mean, yesterday it was literally a box with two little boxes attached, and when I move my fingers, it moves the boxes yeah, down, yeah. and that's it. <laughs> so I just got these sensors working to where I can actually read the data properly from them. Nice. So, right, yeah, right. The, the entire arm moving stuff was programmed today. So you're using <clears> the, I, I want to make sure, you're using, are you using the VR Arduino plugin, or did you, like, develop your own way I'm of just interfacing? talking through serial port. Talking uh, through a serial port, not even needing any extra plugins? Yeah, it's just using C-sharp with a standard serial port. And then the Arduino is just sending numbers with commas. <laughs> awesome. Every, every comma delineates you know, the next unit of measurement. And then it just reads the buffer until there's enough segments that I know that that's all the segments, and then it inputs it and applies it and everything. Right, right. You had said earlier that you've been you've been working in the world of Unity for like four years now, so... Yeah, um, actually the people that did the Arduino, or whatever it was, Uniduino, whatever, I don't <laughs> remember. Uh, they actually, at one point, had seen my stuff. Uh, I had posted how to do it on the Arduino before, or on the Arduino website. So they had actually seen that, and it inspired, I think they said it inspired them to <laughs> go all the way with it. Right, right. The main reason I posted it before is... Uh, I had something similar to the Oculus Rift, where it just but it only had uh, pitch and roll. It didn't have yaw. But I had that like four years ago. So pretty cool. <clears throat> so d did you uh, get the that inspiration from like the old, um, you know, <laughs> any of those old <laughs> double picture things, or where, where did you get your ideas for messing around with that? I just wanted to see if I could do something that made it look like 3D. <laughs> so I strapped a USB LCD to my head with the sensor on it. It just didn't have lenses and such. Oh, okay. So you're having to kind of do like cross-eye? No, I just had it sitting in front of me. And then I put my hand between to stop my eyes from switching. Right, had, right, right. I, okay. It's the same setup as the Rift is where it has two separate cameras. 
and it just displayed to the different sides. Right, like like uh, Lucky had said, like um, a lot of the people who try to make these, they are like uh, they were doing stuff, but then they didn't realize, you know, you have to collimate the light just right, and then it actually, you know, comes alive, and you can see depth and stuff a yeah. lot more easily. So all I had was boxes floating in a room, <laughs> but it was cool to see 3D like that because uh, the main or when I did that part uh, was right when the shutter lenses and stuff were coming out for TVs, and that's mm. that's what made me really go, I want to see if I can do this, because I had Unity, so I knew I could program enough to get it to display properly, except right. I didn't do barrel distortion and lenses and stuff, you obviously. Have hanging around anywhere? Or? No, it's just, uh, I just had an LCD, and I just held the Arduino like this to the back of it. <laughs> So, so now when it comes to the gloves, you want to be a little bit more persistent and get this out there so that, like, somebody yeah, else doesn't... Because I had the idea of, effectively, what the Oculus Rift is now back four years ago, and I just stopped because I didn't have money. And now I have so at least we... a, a regular income now. Back then I had yeah. I was out of a job, so I had no s source of money at all. So it was right, just right. what I had at the time. <clears throat> so, yeah, we... Uh, Every uh, words aren't coming to me. <laughs> I know how um, that feels. Yeah. So um, yeah, getting gloves done, showing them to people, uh, getting people to try it and say that this is cool, so that other people are early adopters are willing to you know try it out there. That that's kind of our goal with the gloves. So awesome. Is there anything else for the live segment? I I, I kind of feel like maybe two hours would be a little long to take this to eight, so maybe we'll take the live segment just to seven. So uh, any other things you all want to touch on before we kind of wrap up the live segment? Not really. The, the only thing I can think of is, um, and maybe this isn't exactly necessary for the live segment, but um, logistics of... Uh, of Sharing, sharing ideas, basically. Um, obviously, we don't want the kind of thing uh, that happened four years ago, where you, you have the the thing, the, the LCD, and then it just kind of gets disappeared in, into the ether or whatever. You want to put it on the internet, get it out there. Um, how things like uh, sharing bill of materials, sharing code. Um, I don't know if you guys want to talk that off. Off the line, live segment that might be better, right? Well, uh, I guess we can put it out there. Like, um, I know you and I are going to be work collaborating together, and like we kind of have a Facebook group where we're kind of you know cataloging everything, so like everybody can get credit where credits due. Uh, but uh, Randy, were you? Uh, I guess do you want to talk about this online or offline? Would you be interested in collaborating at all? in, like, trying to make, like, a cohesive glove project type of thing? Especially, at the very least, like, an API for, for the Unity, because um, I think uh, it, it definitely makes sense to, to try to make a, a standard um, input style. Um, like, it, I, I don't know which one works better, the plug-in or just straight serial, but... Um, like, for example, if we were to build, like, kind of like a feedback glove and send it to you to where you could, like, like mail it to you and you could work on it with uh, your software side of things, what would your thoughts be on that? Uh, sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, right now, the way I have my glove programmed is it obviously the Arduino is just sending data to the computer. It's not right. sending it, calcul it's not sending alterations to it, so it's not, like, it sends the 16-bit data from the tilt sensors. So it's not, you know, 1 degree or 5 degrees or 30 degrees, whatever, uh, because the raw data then makes it to where the plugin that I've programmed in Unity can be used by other people's gloves. It just sends the same data string. So you can right. get all the sensor information to be other sensors. Uh, you know, so you could program it not to be an arm. You could have it be you know, a leg or whatever, and just apply the same script. Yeah, so we could, like, debug, like, over the air, like, uh, 
like uh, you, you uh, Brandon, you could like make it over there, and then he could send the code, and while we're online, see if it works, type of thing, or. Yeah, I, I mean, one of the reasons um, 3D printing works so well for this is if you have access to a printer, it's pretty trivial for me to send you the files, I mean, just email, and uh, we can all have the same hardware. Code is really easy to share. Um, yeah. Yeah, hardware is not. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, Brandon, if, like, uh, if you were to, I guess, 3D print, or if you were to send me the files and I 3D print, either way, like get the hardware on there and then the code's easier to distribute around. Yeah. And maybe we could all three have gloves together and <laughs> be like, yeah, play a game we together and virtually show shake that it works. hands with each other. We can virtually shake hands with each other. <laughs> yeah. Like if you pull up my screen as the main thing I can show you. Yeah. Quick. Uh, clicking on that one. Like here on the right is the AR input which I did it originally as Arduino input, but I guess it could be augmented reality. Oh, his arm's kind of bent backwards. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> ouch. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's, nope, it's not working. But uh, you can see all the different inputs here, and then I have a second script that's taking those inputs and then applying it to the different bones of the 3D model. And awesome. I really don't know why that's offset like that. Ooh. <laughs> well, actually, that wouldn't hurt. No, that doesn't hurt. That, if, that's if bend back that's your right hand, <laughs> that, that's bending bend your arm your back hand. this way. That's your left hand. Oh, that's the oh, that's the left hand. Okay, that oh, would I hurt. Know I know it's <laughs> wrong. That I would hurt quite a bit. I have little there. wires going everywhere, uh, and I unplugged something. I'm sure. Yeah, I unplugged the ground. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's why I switched over to a ribbon cable on this because like all the wires were going everywhere at first uh, for some reason that was the best picture I had which I put on the forums was the one with the wires going everywhere it looked kinda cool but w in all reality the one the ribbon cable ended up helping manage all the cables and then it took away a lot of that bugginess like every once in a while it looks it. slightly less painful now <laughs> yeah but like uh, you can see that I have the ring finger here so if I bend the ring finger you can see the values change Uh, so, the idea is, is that anyone can use the same kind of input and just output numbers and stuff through the Arduino. And you can have light sensors, fans, whatever. <laughs> uh, so oh, okay. Kind of like the yeah, Arduino or whatever. There's a good point. Um, like, the other... Uh, I wonder if I can bring it up real quick on the meant to be seen forums. Uh, but, like, the other sorts of things that you could feel uh, in a glove besides just uh, like what people found Im important when it came to haptic feedback glove. Uh, one second. I'll be able to toss that up in about three seconds if my mouse can stay on the right screen long enough. There we go. Okay, so people definitely wanted you know, like hard and soft resisting. This is kind of a small, yeah, set of people, but it's still kind of. What do y'all think? Do you think forty-nine people is enough to kind of tell? It's a start. <laughs> it's At a least. start. So, like uh, the pressure. What, yeah, what that's pretty much pressure? lining up to what I would have thought. Uh, I would have said the two most important things would be the pressure on your fingers, like feeling, you know, when you grab something, feeling that you grabbed it, yeah, and then yeah. resistance to actually stop you from going further, which is what your glove is obviously trying to do. Right. Uh, and the reason for that is just texture, while it's important for full immersion, it's not required for you to know what's actually happening in the environment. Yeah. yeah. I'm wondering with moisture if I should have also said slime. A lot of people probably wouldn't appreciate feeling slimy hands, though. <laughs> I don't know that moisture is really needed as much as temperature. Uh, if you can't see what you're doing and you touch something that's cold, you can also f might think that it's just wet. Uh, right. Because a lot, of pee -pee, a lot of people associate wet with cold. So, so you can simulate things with just temperature. 
Yeah, so some of these things could be like combined uh, together quite possibly. Uh, wireless seem to be like just underneath like about the same as like soft resisting maybe. Yeah, wireless is pretty easy to do with just like a Bluetooth device though. Uh, yeah. Because you you can I have one uh, Bluetooth device that was three dollars on Deal Extreme that I can attach to an Arduino and it just sends text data, the same data this a serial connection just like I have already. Yeah, like I found it's kind of interesting to like thinking <clears throat> that you could use like a Bluetooth shield type of thing and communicate back and forth. And then I was I was chatting with somebody and they're like, uh, Hey, we're working on something. If you're interested, like we could send you like the same people who are making something for us, but oh by the way, uh, you'd probably need this Bluetooth SDK, which would cost you like two thousand dollars. And I'm like, wait, what? I th I think there's uh, that that's a little bit yeah crazy. I don't think we if we use like the Bluetooth shields that are available, that won't be an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Like I said, you can get Bluetooth shields for pretty or Bluetooth. It's not necessarily a shield; it's just a chip, but you can get them pretty cheap. Right, and then using like the already existing Arduino libraries, you don't need to go re reinventing the wheel. So that's one of the nice things about Arduino versus having <laughs> to invent your stuff from scratch is that you can do pretty much whatever you want. So that's why this Hangout is kind of called, you know, VR Arduino. We can see the value of like how making stuff following the open source Arduino stuff. We can. Well, I'm doing all this stuff without any knowledge of electronics. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it all out by, you know, just looking online for stuff, how to do certain things. So. Right. You don't have to know what you're doing a lot. <laughs> you, you just have to know just enough. <clears throat> Yeah. Depends on how much money money you're willing to spend. If you have right. infinite money, you don't need to know anything. Yeah, I think what that guy was kind of trying to get across was the fact that, like, for really low latency, maybe you'd want yeah, to. Yeah, I I wouldn't want it for something like the Rift because the Rift would need too high of late or would get too high of latency, and you would get motion sickness and yeah. stuff that you already have right. just yeah. with a wired connection. But as far as your hand. It's not going to matter if it's 30 milliseconds as opposed to 40. Yeah, it's it's not going to matter. Like, if especially if you're grabbing squishy objects, it's like, well, if it's a little bit off, how are you going to visually tell <laughs> that your hand didn't squish far enough? <laughs> I'm going to make everything in my game a sponge now. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you go. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll have <clears throat> Reverend Kyle have like I don't know. And that'll be another mini game: sponges in the sink. SpongeBob SquarePants. Oh. Uh, uh, that'll be cool. I I, I want to play as him now. In I I hope that doesn't sound weird at all. But it would be interesting, like playing as yeah, a barista, I guess. <laughs> Have a uh, work at the Krusty Krab and flip burgers and <laughs> send your hands. Ooh, okay. Everything else is spongy. I guess it could be a cafe instead of like a. There you go. Yeah. Muffins are spongy. So, yeah, I, I'm gonna keep yeah going through those tutorials. I, is there any you'd recommend, uh, Randy, for like uh, learning programming? Like, you, you're definitely way farther ahead in the programming like of like glove stuff, but maybe like you know just making objects within a game. Uh, Unity specifically, I can suggest the Tornado Twins. The Tornado videos. Twins. Yeah, uh, they did those videos back when it when I first started with Unity, but they're still relevant today. There's not a ton that has changed. It's mainly like how you put stuff in the scene, uh, the dragging and dropping. It has an extra, or it looks a little bit different, but for the most part, it's the same. Right. It, it it's kind of like the uh, I I don't know how how much y'all like Rainier. Are you still in like uh, I for, I think you said you're done with college or you did s I, I, uh, I graduated you... from college in 2009 but okay. I it hasn't really helped much <laughs> oh, I learned like okay. keyboard shortcuts and that's about it 
Right. But a lot of those teachers, I'm sure you all have heard, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, you can get the older versions because the material's pretty much the same. They've just, you know, changed a few graphics and stuff. Yeah, it, so. it's, the coding is the exact same, no matter yeah. what. Uh, there might be extra features added on to it at this point, but the code is still the exact same. For example, the, in Java, they'll add <clears> a few extra functions, but you can go into the uh, Oracle and find all that, no problem. Yeah. Yep. And the plus with Unity is it has a full scripting reference with examples and documentation and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I loved how you could like highlight something and just go and like find all the example code and stuff. Yep. So, yeah, having a great experience right off the bat just starting to touch on Unity. It seems very Java-like even though it's not Java. Well, C Sharp is based off of the Java language. They looked at C uh, and Java, from what I understand, saw what was good and what was bad, and made C+. Well, Microsoft plus. used to have something yeah. called J Sharp, which was Microsoft's version of Java, but mm -hmm. then Java, or, or or not Oracle, but uh, whoever it was at the time, Sun, Sun, Sun yeah. Microsystems sued them for it. <laughs> <laughs> so Microsoft stopped making J Sharp and started making C Sharp. Yay, awesome. So it is a combination of Java and C++. Awesome. And you end up with that, and the rest is history. <laughs> okay, and C -sharp so... And Unity is pretty much the same as C Sharp and Visual Basic, or Visual Studio, or whatever. So you can, if you learn it in Unity, you can actually make regular programs also. Right, right. <clears throat> So, uh, any last thoughts before we wrap up the uh, live segment? Um, Global Game Jam is on jo January 24th. Everyone should go. It's Glo fun. Global what? Global Game Jam. Global Game Jam. Where is that located at? Uh, lots of places, like over 200 locations around the world. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, Global awesome. Game Jam. The idea of Global Game Jam is to be a weekend where you go to a place get a random theme based on whatever they, you know, the organization had decided on, and then you make a game based on that theme. So, for oh. example, <clears throat> the theme might be cherry pies, and you would figure out some type of game you want to make involving cherry pies. Now, can you do that virtually with people over the Internet? Maybe we could have a VR game jam where we start work on a demo or something. Uh, you can, but uh, it's more... F Fun in person. <laughs> oh, I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay. The, the, yeah, the yeah. main idea is to get you networking because a lot of people that code and stuff are obviously not very social. Right. So, <laughs> so you can meet artists because artists don't go to coding forums. Coders don't go to artist forums, but you can go to a game jam and then meet an artist and work with art. Like, everything I made before I started going to game jams was just squares and circles and <laughs> what is known as well, programmer art. It'd be fun in the future if we can, like, uh, go to, let's say, like a virtual, uh, virtual reality, you know, hangout room and we can have, like, virtual, reality virtual, game we'll jam. Have virtual, <laughs> virtual computers over here. I mean, virtual computers on one side so people can, like, have their virtual systems on, textured onto something and they're working on code on virtual computers and then they like make something physical and plug it in like a simulated Arduino within a virtual world to test stuff. That'd be pretty crazy. It might be a, a few years down the line. It's very, <laughs> it's very meta. Very, very meta. <laughs> you can make games while in a game. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's you'll like put Minecraft. Uh, did did y'all see uh, that um, exploration school? Like, there's the one part where you, you the rift within the rift, and, yeah, that was pretty meta right there. Pac-Man within a game. It's VR. Anywho, so uh, I guess that pretty much will wrap it up for our live section. Thank you, everyone, for coming out today, and uh, uh, our viewers for watching. Um, please comment and let us know your thoughts, uh, any of the subjects we've touched on, if you got ideas. And um, I'll probably uh, get the link to the Facebook group in the description of the video as well. And I guess that'll conclude it. So uh, we'll see you all later, everybody. See you next week. Bye.